Welcome back to the channel and a happy new year to all of you. I've looked back at the videos I've done over the last five years and realised I've spent so much time talking about hip surgery that I've completely overlooked the anatomy of the hip joint. Doing a bit of research on this, I had a look at some of my old anatomy textbooks that I bought when I was studying for my surgical exams a long time ago. In order to become a surgeon, you have to pass some rigorous exams. The worst one was called the primary FRCS. About 90% of people failed this exam. It was absolutely brutal. The exam was at the Royal College of Surgeons in Lincoln's Inn Fields in London. You had to know everything about anatomy, physiology and pathology. The first part was a multiple choice exam and you had to pass this in order to do the dreaded viva a few weeks later. The viva was terrifying. Some of the examiners had a reputation for asking impossible questions. We used to call them smiling death. You couldn't go any further in your career without the primary and this really piled on the pressure to pass it. I got it on the second attempt and I can still remember the moment the results were given to us. We were milling around the reception hall in the college, anxiously awaiting our fate. A college official appeared on the staircase and called out the candidate numbers of those who'd passed. It wasn't very many. My number was called and I was ecstatic. We all went to the nearest pub and got thoroughly plastered. So in today's video, we'll look at the basic anatomy of the hip joint. It's a ball and socket joint and the biggest one in the body. The head of the femur, the thigh bone, sits inside the acetabulum, the socket in the pelvis. Acetabulum is the Latin word for a small cup that was used to hold vinegar. Apparently the Romans liked to drink vinegar and water. A lot of people do the same thing these days, believing that it keeps them healthy. The ball and socket shape is what gives our hips such amazing mobility in all directions. What stops the ball coming out of the socket? Well, there are strong ligaments and muscles around the hip which hold everything in place. There's also negative pressure inside the joint that helps as well. It takes a lot of force to dislocate the hip, such as a fall from a height or a high-speed car or motorbike crash. The surfaces of the hip joint are covered in articular cartilage. All our joints have this. This is a thick layer of protein and cells that hold water and act as a shock absorber, allowing the joint to move and bear weight. It's really a mechanical bearing. When we get arthritis, the cartilage dries out and it starts to wear away. This exposes the bone, causing pain and stiffness, and in severe cases, the hip needs to be replaced. As we get older, our bones get thinner and weaker, and this increases the risk of breaking them. The neck of the femur, just underneath the head, is particularly vulnerable to breaking. And of course, as we get older, our risk of falling increases. About 80,000 people a year in the UK break their hips. It's a devastating injury because it's often associated with frailty and multiple medical problems. Our hips go through about a million cycles of use a year, so it's really important to look after them. So how do we do this? Well, it's the usual things like keeping your weight under control, having a good diet with plenty of protein and taking regular weight-bearing exercise. Walking's as good as anything. Think about taking some vitamin D supplements, particularly at this time of the year. If you're a woman, then the risk of osteoporosis increases after menopause. So consider talking to your GP about taking HRT. Every hip is different, as individual as your face or fingerprints. It fascinates me and that's why I love my job. If you'd like to know more about anything to do with hips, then please get in touch. The details are below in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.